Elon Musk recently presented a project for a reusable spacecraft called Starship and plans to test it in orbit soon. The head of SpaceX promises to deliver a full-fledged spacecraft to send the first colonists to Mars. But even with the successful implementation of such an interesting project, the Red Planet may still remain nothing more than a big dream for mankind. According to some researchers, it may be difficult for people to even get out of the ship and onto the surface of the planet. So what will prevent them from taking a step onto this new world? For astronauts, the enemy won't be some evil force, but their own bodies. A doctor from the famous TV and film series Star Trek, Leonard Bones McCoy, said that space is a disease and danger wrapped in darkness and silence. Actually, due to a sharp change in conditions from the very first few minutes in space, everything will literally turn upside down for the space travelers. Headaches, dizziness, and nausea will begin. But when the body adjusts, most of the symptoms will disappear. However, don't get too excited. The longer the journey, the more health problems astronauts will have. According to Elon Musk's calculations, Starship will reach Mars relatively quickly, in no more than a year. However, the lack of gravity will have time to cause irreparable harm to the body. For example, recently, the scientific journal JAMA Network Open published the results of a medical examination of 11 astronauts who spent 50 days on the International Space Station. Six of them experienced blood clots that formed during their stay in space. Most blood clots occurred inside the jugular veins and more often in the internal jugular vein. This is the main vessel that carries deoxygenated blood away from the cranial cavity. Scientists don't know exactly what the consequences of this process might be, but in any case, it doesn't bode well. This is comparable to standing on your head for a very long time. After a while, your health will worsen dramatically. Together with the circulatory system, astronauts' brains will also suffer. Researchers from the Medical University of South Carolina studied in detail the brain scans of 18 astronauts who spent more than six months on board the International Space Station. They found that a prolonged absence of gravity literally pushed the brain against the skull and also led to a narrowing of the folds and grooves on the surface of the cortex. Also, the amount of cerebrospinal fluid increased in all of the patients. Extra fluid literally squeezed the brain, reducing the space between its regions. Such changes lead to increased intracranial pressure, optic nerve tumors, and loss of vision. Even the central groove of the brain narrowed, which separates the parietal lobes from the frontal. These parts control the movements of the body, are responsible for spatial awareness, executive functions, and social behavior. With such effects, people usually can't make out many objects, execute important commands, and don't display good social skills. Weightlessness will destroy the musculoskeletal system of space travelers. Loss of bone tissue in some parts of the body during a long flight can reach one to two percent per month. From this, the legs and back are weakened most of all. The bones begin to literally crack at the seams and then disintegrate. Calcium and other substances from the destroyed bones enters the bloodstream in large quantities. The excess of calcium can cause the appearance of kidney stones, stomach ulcers, and serious heart diseases. But these are not all of the negative consequences of weightlessness. Researchers from the University of California found that it leads to a breach of the integrity of the cell barrier that lines the intestines. This insulating layer prevents the entry of viruses and bacteria from the intestines into the human body. 
leaky gut syndrome in astronauts causing increased permeability will greatly increase the risk of various inflammations, type 1 diabetes, and liver disease. A prolonged stay in zero gravity will disrupt the functioning of the immune system. Of course, there isn't too great a risk of catching any infection due to a weakened immune system in empty space. Nevertheless, a malfunction of the immune system can cause hypersensitivity and an autoimmune reaction when the body perceives its own cells as foreign bodies and begins to attack them. In addition to weightlessness, radiation will bring many problems. So Mars, to where we're getting ready to fly, unlike the Earth, doesn't have its own magnetic field. Because of this, the planet is subject to constant exposure to cosmic rays and solar wind. The American probe Mars Odyssey found that the level of constant background radiation on Mars is two and a half times higher than the level in the orbit of the ISS. Prolonged exposure to such high radiation, if not protected by thick walls, can lead to acute radiation sickness, genetic damage, and even death. True, American and Russian scientists recently said that cosmic radiation doesn't cause cardiovascular or oncological diseases. The conclusions were made on the basis of their joint analysis of two sets of data on 117 cosmonauts and 301 astronauts. However, researchers note that when flying over long distances, radiation will affect the body much more. Scientists have yet to fully study its long-term impact on humans in space, because so far, no one has flown to another planet. However, now many experts are sure that with such trips, nevertheless, there will be a very high risk of developing cancer and heart diseases. Also, astronauts will likely experience negative changes in their bone marrow, while cataracts and other various mutations could also develop. To put it plainly, it's likely that the health of those migrating to Mars will suffer greatly during space travel, and they won't be able to manage the work waiting on Mars. So, before the colonization of the Red Planet, scientists will have to work seriously on strengthening the human body. And they already offer many promising new tools. For example, the creation of the simulator Vega in Russia is an excellent aid for adapting to weightlessness. And NASA has developed a special diet that will help support good vision as well as vascular and intestinal health. Scientists have also proposed new ways to increase the resistance of the human body to radiation. Development is based on innovative technologies such as genetic engineering. Researchers from the University of Tokyo, together with colleagues from other research centers, suggest introducing tardigrade genes into the bodies of astronauts. These organisms have a unique resistance to radiation. Even to achieve a 50% death rate among tardigrades, it would take a radiation dose a thousand times more than for humans. A gene called DSUP, or damage suppressor, is found in their bodies. The damage suppressor protein is not similar to any other known protein in its amino acid sequence. At the same time, Time, it somehow protects the DNA from damage that can occur during dehydration or exposure to ionizing radiation. If the D sub protein is in the cell, fewer breaks appear in the DNA. In human cells, after introducing D sub, X ray resistance increased by 40%. But our bodies, according to researchers, are incredibly resilient and able to adapt to space conditions in a number of different ways. For example, astronaut Scott Kelly, who spent the whole year aboard the ISS at the age of 52, almost completely lost his vision and bone tissue. His muscles atrophied, and because of the redistribution of blood through his body, his heart walls tensed and contracted. With the help of doctors, he managed to restore his health after just a few months. 
Kelly believes that the inhabitants of Earth will have to endure a lot during long journeys through the solar system. It's difficult to disagree with a man who's proved this by his own example. And what do you think? Will we ever reach Mars or other planets? Or will our bodies forever chain us to the Earth? And will robots be the only ones to go on long distance space travel? Please write your thoughts in the comments below. If you like the video, give us a quick thumbs up. Click on the bell to be the first to know about new releases. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. A lot more of the most interesting information is still ahead of us. Until next time.